do achieve the same thing. So it it is very complex. The whole that there is a lot of things on the menu you have. Uh, so the next question was like, how does how long does it take to prepare for a step one? Exact how much how much dedicated time you give it for a step one? Like this must from now till that date, I am like fully focused on my step one. I'm gonna give this and I'm gonna crack this. So how how long it does take? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it is pretty much subjective. What I have seen in my journey is students in India have yeah. better found better basic science foundation than yes. FMGs. And FMGs need to realize this. Definitely. Because it is a fact. Students in India have good uh, basic medical science backup. So what I've found is students in India just take eight months to prepare for uh, who have like studied in med school in India. Mm -hmm. They just give off the exam in eight months, six months. That's what I've seen. And F for FMGs, just because they need to push a little bit more, on the basic medical science part, they usually take like a year or a year and a half. So it's completely up to you. If you have a study partner who is from uh, a better university or you found someone online, you know, uh, is, is using better techniques in order to study. So you might catch up with their speed. Mm -hmm. But I think anywhere between eight months to a year should be enough for preparing for both the steps. Okay. Whether it is step um, just just an additional point. Some people try to give like they work really hard and they try to give both of their exams within a two year period. So right after they are clearing with step one, let's say by studying one and a half year, then within the next half quarter of the year, they'll also get done with their step two. Just because the information is fresh in their mind. You know, and that works a lot and that makes sense in the beginning. It might sound uh, like a tiring process, you know, you just got uh, done with your step one and you want some uh, free time. Maybe take a month, uh, go out for a vacation or something. But if you start right away for step two, because there is a lot of carryover of information from step one to step two. It's like you, you are asked what is the best next step in step two and you are asked what is the mechanism of this thing in step one so it's like you're going from mechanism to finally now uh, clearing clinical concepts like what is the best next step you do which medication will you use or which diagnostic uh, test will you order for this particular condition so uh, step two in that way can be a little bit easier than step one because step one is not a lot of step one is factual so you need to remember a lot of mechanism you need to remember a lot of even stains sometime in micro yes. microbiology. So uh, I think uh, once you're done with your step one and you give step two in a close periphery, you can improve your step two scores. For us, we had a gap between our step one and step two. Yeah. So I think that was a factor which, um, you know, kind of like lowered my score in step two. But um, yeah, I think. Uh, because uh, I also have heard that uh step two is like around 40 50 percent of the step one only yeah definitely because you know the foundation is the same like yeah. the disorders will not change. yeah like they will not change about, you are studying about myocardial infarction you are studying about nephrolithiasis you are studying about the same things but the approach changes in yeah. step one they ask what kind of stones are most common and then in like renal stones and in step two they'll ask that the patient has stones, what is the best next step you're going to do? How are you How are you going to treat the patient or how are you going to diagnose the patient? You know, do you need to worry about pre-renal syndrome? Do you need to worry about post-renal syndrome? So, uh, so, yeah, I mean... It is, like, it is like identification of any kind of particular pathology in step one and uh, management in the step two. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's That's the core difference between the two exams. And step two is a little bit more, has a little bit more of biostatistics and uh, epidemiology. So you might want to cover that subjects uh, for step two in a better way. Okay. Practicing. Because there are big drug ads. You, you'll find a lot of drug ad questions which are very lengthy. You need to, like, you'll be scared first time when you're solving those questions in your world because there are going to be, they're just going to present you with a new study, which is a hypothetical study or a real study. 
and they'll just ask you like, do you see a difference? Do you see a clinical significance or what factor do you think is the most important one? So, oh, so you need that, to be updated for the edge. Yeah. And there is a, you don't need to, the trick with those questions is like, you don't need to solve those questions as a whole, but you just need to find loopholes. Like you need to find a key point in the question that are they asking me to find the hazard ratio or are they finding, are they asking me to find uh, like a correlation coefficient? What, what are they asking to find in the study? And then you need to just look at those aspects in the study. Um, this way you can just give the answers really fast. Now I want to ask you that what were the like core basic resources that there are n number of resources out there in the market for you assembly like someone says this one is bad, better, this one is better, this one is better as per their understanding. So according to you, what do you think like what were the co main core best, not even we cannot say best because nothing is best according to anything like what were your core uh, basic resources that you use for preparing for this step one? I think the best one is U word, mm -hmm. like very simple. I, I just want to be very simple because the resources are so complicated. So yeah. I think U word is the core resource. Okay. Because uh, the exam itself is a lot like U word. Even when you'll solve NBMEs mm -hmm. later while you are preparing or self assessment of U words, I feel like especially for step two, the okay. U word self assessment were really uh, accurate in order to predict the score, okay. uh, the self-assessment too, uh, especially, because my score were like in the periphery of self-assessment mm -hmm. and a lot of people who I know. So you were doing you world is like active learning. Like you are solving a question first, you're making an educated guess if you don't know, mm -hmm. and then you're realizing that where were you wrong? You know, at what part of the question did you get it wrong? And then you can, you know, know the right answer that way it's like giving you active learning in a form of active learning like doing flashcards right so okay. when you do flashcards there are there are a lot of flashcards of course like anki is one yeah. of them like people use. so anki is essentially what you, you look at a question and then you think of it and then you flip the card and then you see the deal so it's like active learning you yes. learn in itself so, like, doing U world should be the core uh, mm -hmm. thing that you are doing in, in order to prepare for your step exams. Secondly, I think first aid for step one, first aid for step one is an excellent uh, book that you can refer to. Uh, and for step two, I think uh, using whiteboard companion of Boards and Beyond uh, can be helpful. Like, it's a, it's a really good it's almost like first aid for step two mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't really recommend the, the original first aid for step two CK that they have in market because that book is uh, quite less uh, you know literature like in terms for just passing the exam but whiteboard companion from boards and beyond for step two and three combined is a very good book for step two okay. and if you want to like read a little bit more, if you, if you have time, like these are the only resource that you need. But if you have used this resource like one or two times and you still have time, then you can refer to uh, this book I forgot. Um, it's a really good book. It, it's, it's actually not a literature. It's, it's combined by students all over the world. And it's, it's basically the conglomerate of all the U-World explanations in one place. You can find it on drives. It's called U-World Noted. U-World Noted. Yeah, I've seen a couple of times. Yeah. U-World Noted. So that is also really good for step two. Because you are essentially doing U-World in a form of book. Okay. So uh, I think a lot of things revolving around U world score concept is the only single best thing that will help you ace the USMT exams. Okay. And so I have also heard uh, a lot about that um, Pathoma boards and beyond for step one, particularly for step one. So what are your views about that? That is good while you are doing your school. Okay. Like if there are two categories. So me, I, I did Pathoma and everything during my third year. So while I was preparing for my university boards exam. So mm -hmm. 
I use those resources because those are huge resources. Yes. Like Pathoma is very lengthy. Kaplan videos are very lengthy, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's good if you use it during your med school while you are doing like building your foundation. Okay. But if you if you are if you didn't use those resources and you're preparing for step one, going towards those resources will just uh, you know waste a lot of your time. Okay. It will help you definitely if you're if you're planning to give step one, like say after a year and a half, and you want to be done with all the resources, then you can use Pathma, clinical microbiology made ridiculously simple. You can use that. All those little things. But I think if I'm talking to a young medical student, then I guess I would advise him to like use these resources, little ones, while you know doing their second year, third year. But if they are in their fourth year or fifth year and they're mm -hmm. about to graduate, then there's no point in using those resources. They can use those resources for their own use after they clear the boards, okay. right? To their uh, knowledge and stuff. But in order to clear boards, you just need a definitive plan and some definitive high yield concepts. And UWorld is more than enough in order to ace that. Because your, your main goal should be to be able to sit for seven hours and scroll through the questions within 60 seconds, 80 seconds, because you just have 70, 80 seconds per question. Okay. So I think the time shortage is really, it needs to be addressed really well. So you will help you with that. You'll find it even like you read internal medicine, you will even like pathology is nothing in front of internal medicine. Because yes, yes, yes. if if you study internal medicine as a subject, if you want to go really deep, open the Harrison's book, then it's just an ocean of information. You, that's what I'm saying. You don't need to do that for USMLE boards. Mm -hmm. USMLE boards is a very specific exam which asks you very specific high yield concepts and people fail to realize that. I myself failed to realize that when I was, when I was giving step one. But then I met a lot of high scorers and their ideology was very different their ideology was they only focused on high yield concepts they didn't they didn't care that i know everything but they did care about one thing that i need to know and i know every high yield concepts and that has helped them you know ace the exam so it's kind of like uh, controversial in that sense right limited resource that's what i mentioned i mean you world first aid for step one white coat companion for modes and beyonds and the lectures of boards and beyonds. Like lectures of boards and beyond, Jason Ryan is like more than enough. He covers most of the high yeah, concepts. Absolutely. So it's, yeah, this, these are the only tools you need. So sir, uh, personally for like for me, as I'm preparing for it, I would just want to ask that uh, when I'm reading first aid, uh, so let's suppose say, I'm gonna um, study about cardiomyopathies. So in the right. beginning, beginning, there are like pathological point of view, like how it started and what are the like um, predisposing factors about this. And over the over the course of reading, they like, we don't even realize them, but very smoothly they shift into the concepts of medicine. So I want to ask that if uh, after studying pathology, should we consider studying medicine also about like uh, um, those concepts from the medicine point of view or just we need from pathology point of view only? I think for step one, you don't need medicine, like internal medicine, because it's more, more of internal medicine kind of stuff is asked in step two. Okay. So step two, you this is a very interesting question because I think 60% of step one is pathology and 60% yes. of step two is internal medicine. So oh. these two subjects, these two subjects are very uh, crucial for both the exams. But doing pathology, like from to the core, like to the NADPH level core, mm -hmm. is uh, very important for step one. But okay. a lot of NADPH like question stuff would not be a, would not appear in step two. Uh, step two is more like clinical, like how are you dealing with the patients mm -hmm. if they if. Like they simulate real uh, life scenarios in ward in step two. And they ask basic science questions in step one. So they'll ask you, what is this enzyme? How is it responsible for doing this particular symptom? All these stuff is in step one. Okay. And they won't ask you like, 
what does that enzyme do or what does that specific drug why does that specific drug cause this specific side effect in step 2 they are just they'll just give you the side effect and they'll expect you to know which drug caused it in the words like what was on your order list that caused this kind of a reaction to the patient so approach is different in step 2 while doing step 2 questions you will feel like you're you're doing virtual rounds on the in the words and while doing step 1 you'll feel like you are uh, uh, giving an academic paper where you need to know nitty gritty details about stuff so i think that's I think I was wrong because when I was doing like couple of questions, sometimes they're on Instagram. They upload uh, sometime question of your world. So while doing those question, I was thinking that they are like creating a simulation environment for me for us in the step one only. And now you are telling that step one is nothing in front of step two. Seriously, I mean step step two is it it pushes you. Some questions in step two, you even if you ask to consultants now. they they don't know the answer to it because it's it's uh it's very abstract you'll feel like you'll feel the difference while giving both the exam so that's what i think i mean and since you you since you put that social media thing um there are a lot of people who are into this stuff now okay. they want to create business they want to create their own company yes all those platforms which are helping our students communicate those are the good platforms mm. like i don't have a problem with that but i see a lot of students selling their own online courses yes um, that is i mean don't fall for that stuff you world is a big organization which is affiliated with ecfmg in all I, i don't know if it's affiliated with ecfmg but it's integrated into the system like mm. the questions of you world they do appear in the actual exam even nbme nbme is uh, that kind of a body so use resources which are uh, recognized mm-hmm. don't fall for well, it's tempting because you want to do this also you want to do this also so i think stay away from all the like if if a person is doing the residency and they are selling you a course i would ask you to stay away from those people because they are still learning in the process what what would they know how better than the you world people and if you are spending let's say 30000 on you world then why do you want to spend an extra money and make those people rich who know i mean i don't say that they don't know a lot of stuff they might be knowing a lot of stuff but they might not be the best teacher in terms in terms of academic stuff like you world what what you world promises you is a 260 really those people won't promise you anything yeah definitely definitely because the people sitting in the u world like they are at the level at they are at some kind of level yeah it's peer reviewed everything is peer reviewed mm-hmm. whatever questions are coming there is a panel who peer reviews it and it, it really simulates the real exam a lot so just focus on proper you world like i suggest to everyone that take a one year subscription of you world like it's worth spending the money rather than giving those bits and small pieces of sips to those uh, you know um, yes. freshly graduated people like i wouldn't like even if i knew everything even if i had 270s on my uh, step exams i would i wouldn't sell a course i wouldn't sell a course because it's it's detriment a lot of people are buying it if if i put it on market a lot of people will buy it. definitely but at what cost at what cost mm. i'm just distracting them if there yeah, are good resources let the issue yeah exactly okay if if you're doing in social media influencing is a different thing i'm not against that like you you share your journey what did you do how did you get us clinical rotations uh, that stuff is good but don't fall for those questions like hey i'm someone would be like hey i matched at this point and you know i'm i'm giving you a software uh, like not so, not even software i'm giving you a pdf of few questions yes. high yield i think is high yield yeah there are so many like what we can say like you are you are having doctor as a prefix 
on your name and you are doing some sort of business, manipulating others, manipulating young doctors. Yeah. It's like very ridiculous. The thing is, I'm, I'm, they, they won't even know that they're manipulated. Their intent might be very clear. Their mm -hmm. intent might be good. But it's, it's not enough. Yes. The bigger picture, what's happening, you need to know the consequence. If the consequences are bad, you need to stop that. And that's what I advise to everyone watching this video. I mean, don't fall for uh, those uh, low quality stuff, but instead just focus on high yield stuff like reward, NBMEs, even USMLE RX is a good tool. It's, it's a recognized tool. So use those tools because there are, it's, it's a big business, mm -hmm. right? big business which is affiliated with a lot of good institutes and it, what it's selling it's selling promise it's selling a promise of 260 which a lot of people have achieved mm -hmm. so why do you use different tools um so how we like sir uh, use this uh first aid and uh, u world or usmle rx like we should use the hand to hand or after like uh, completing our first aid annotating or some sort of this stuff and then shifting to u world and U usmle rx what are your views about it? I think you should use everything simultaneously. Okay. I mean, everyone has a different study pattern, um, like whatever works best for people. But what I would suggest is use everything together. Don't don't rely on like, I will finish this chapter, reading it first, watching lectures of it first, and then solving MCQs. Because if you do that, your questions are going to be right. Like most of your questions, you're going to make it right. Mm -hmm. But what I suggest is first do the questions. Okay. Then you'll know the real your real strength of knowledge. Mm -hmm. What you have without reading. And then when you're solving those questions, you're doing active learning. Like you're not just wasting your time. You're doing active learning. And when you get those concepts in your mind, then revert to books, which will further strengthen. And reading will be easier when you solve MCQs first, mm -hmm. like let's say there are what 100 mcqs in cardiology in step one cuban solve all those 100 questions who cares about what marks you get because yes. it's a learning, tool. You only... world is a learning tool. repeat after me u world is a learning tool it's not it's not something which you like uh, assess your scores based on something like that but it's a learning even if you get 10 percent after clearing those 100 mcqs it's okay you learned a lot Mm -hmm. then you read the question then you read the literature and it's like a reverse psychology thing but when you read the books then after doing the mcqs you'll you'll find the difference like the text will seem easier to understand the concepts the difficult concepts like that cardiac uh you know that loop page i still remember from yes. first year of it i when i read it for the first time i spent a lot of time just reading it understanding it but uh, I think that's what once Manik told me. So he solved the questions. He he used this method. He solved the questions first and then he used to read the theories and stuff like that. So he was able to catch every information very easily from first aid since he was doing the MCQs first. Since he was, since he made himself wrong first on an MCQ, he knows what's the right answer to that. And then when you read the same concept from the books, it gets really easy. And that's what most of the high scorers are doing as of now. As I know. Yeah, because after solving MCQs, when you are reading the content, like it's been like what to study and what to just skip and avoid because exactly. you will get a just an idea after solving like 100 or a couple of 100 questions. You will just get an idea that this will be asked, this will be not asked. So why to waste the time on this instead of, exactly. instead of study this only? Yeah.